Prices for vintage Kenner Star Wars toys have reached unprecedented heights in recent years and are now so ridiculously expensive that I couldn't help but reflect on the hobby of collecting Kenner Star Wars and ask the question, is the blue milk worth the squeeze? On my recent trip to the United States, I picked up a nice vintage Kenner Star Wars tie interceptor and this new addition to my collection meant that I now own three of the four different TIE fighters produced for this toy line. So the collecting side of my brain started telling me that I now had to pick up the original white TIE fighter from 1978 and complete the set. Not long after returning home, I found myself looking around on eBay for the fourth and final vintage Kenner Star Wars TIE fighter that I needed, and I was shocked to find nice loose examples selling for $200 each. I'm not ignorant to the fact that prices for vintage Kenner Star Wars toys have skyrocketed in recent years, but I also remember a time not all that long ago when Kenner TIE Fighters were selling at toy shows for 40 bucks a piece. This discovery led me down a wormhole of eBay sold listings, and I quickly realized that prices for vintage Star Wars toys hadn't just skyrocketed. They'd made the jump to light speed and landed in a galaxy far, far away. Loose figures, even the rare ones that used to sell for hundreds, are now going for thousands, and trying to acquire mint carded examples of the same figures means you have to take out a second mortgage on your home. Upon reflection, I consider myself lucky that I acquired the bulk of my collection between 2011 and 2014, because although vintage Star Wars toys held considerable value back then, they hadn't reached the absurdly astronomical prices they command today. While my collection is far from complete, it is substantial enough for me to be satisfied with it. So in today's economic climate with gas prices soaring, when I see the extortionate prices that vintage Star Wars is selling for, I'm seriously considering walking away from this facet of the toy collecting hobby. Look, I ain't in this for your revolution, and I'm not in it for you. I expect to be well paid. I'm in it for the money. I started seriously collecting vintage toys all the way back in 1993. And at that time, there was already a large community of Kenner Star Wars collectors who were hunting for their favorite childhood toys at flea markets, secondhand stores, and garage sales. The steady growth of this community continued throughout the 90s and into the new millennium, as more and more people were passing into adulthood and wanted to use their disposable income to reconnect with nostalgic feelings of childhood via the medium of vintage Star Wars toy collecting. Then in 2015, an event occurred that blew the doors wide open on this collecting community, and that was the cinematic debut of the first Star Wars film to be released since the franchise had found a new home with Disney. The Force Awakens premiered in December 2015, and while hindsight taught us that J.J. Abrams directed a movie that had no clear vision of where the story was supposed to go in the sequels, at the time, fans across the world lapped up this new Star Wars adventure to the tune of $2 billion. <laughs> Although the prequel trilogy era did see the ranks of the Star Wars toy collecting community swell in the early 2000s, the critical fan reaction to those movies prevented that swell from developing into the full-blown tidal wave that I witnessed in 2015 and beyond. While some of us could see the cracks in The Force Awakens story, cracks that the sequels would fail to patch, after the disappointing prequel trilogy, the majority of fans saw this film as a welcome return to classic Star Wars and nostalgia baiting the audience with appearances from the classic trilogy heroes certainly helped to reignite a spark among Star Wars fans. Chewie, we're home. But I really think that timing was the biggest factor in creating an explosion of new Star Wars toy collectors. Those of us that grew up playing with the original Kenner Star Wars toys were either in our 40s or rapidly approaching them when The Force Awakens was released in 2015. By this stage in most people's lives, we have steady jobs, a secure home, and greater financial stability than what we had in our 20s or early 30s. And when an event movie like this one brings our memories of playing with Star Wars toys bubbling to the surface, it inspires slews of new Gen Xers to start collecting vintage Star Wars toys. I got a bad feeling about this. This colossal influx of new collectors quickly sent prices soaring as rabid demand met finite supply. And seemingly overnight, genuine Princess Leia blasters started costing more than premium bottles of liquor, and desirable carded Star Wars figures were selling for more than a brand new car. As more new vintage Star Wars buyers kept pouring in, just as many collectors began finding themselves priced out of the hobby. And notice how I said new buyers were pouring in. Public credits? The public credits are no good out here, I need something more real. That was a very selective choice of words because while a large proportion of the new people entering the Kenner Star Wars market after 2015 
were genuine enthusiasts. Just as many were wealthy people and businesses who wanted nothing more than to cash in on this new collectible bubble. Those guys must really be desperate. This could really save my neck. Get back to the ship and get it ready. And as more people joined the market, demand increased, supply remained limited, and artificial inflation grew. Many of these new buyers aren't here to build a collection of vintage Star Wars toys. They're here to make money, and they're stimulating the market through shill bidding and fake sales. But this process is not sustainable, and eventually the price will crash, and when that happens, those left holding the vintage Star Wars toys will lose everything. We've seen these types of speculative bubbles in pop culture collecting before, but it doesn't surprise me that people are still being duped into paying way, way over the top for vintage Star Wars toys, and that's because they're buying into a manipulated market. People see this trend of rising prices for vintage Kenner Star Wars items, and some decide to get in on the action, no matter how high the buying costs, because they believe this trend will continue forever. Then you have auction houses like Hakes who drum up media interest and get news outlets to spread speculative values for their future Star Wars auctions. This effectively creates a feeding frenzy, and it's in their best interest to do so, because Hakes adds an 18% buyer's premium to all of their sold auctions. Look no further than the infamous prototypes for the rocket firing Boba Fett action figure. Ten years ago these were selling for twenty to thirty thousand dollars, a lucrative price for sure, but in June 2022 one of these rare prototypes fetched two hundred grand, and while that price is beyond irrational, Hakes pockets an extra thirty six thousand dollars for slamming down the gavel. I sold them to the white slavers. Strangely, we rarely ever find out who purchases these high end Star Wars toy collectibles. Sure, the buyer could be a private person who wants to remain anonymous, but it can't always be the case. And in my experience, most passionate collectors want to show off their collections. Many wealthy Star Wars enthusiasts post YouTube videos showing off their collections, and some even enter the Guinness World Record book, so the fact that we hardly ever find out who buys the most expensive items is very suspicious. Something elsewhere, elusive. It makes me wonder if someone or some business behind a figure grading company, auction house or other business that deals in selling vintage toys is buying these items at inflated prices in order to manipulate the market and manufacture a bubble they can profit from. Back in 2019, the same auction house sold another rocket firing Boba Fett prototype for $157,500 and the media interest generated around this sale helped perpetuate this positive feedback loop that drove the most recent sale to the $200,000 mark. And again, we never learned who the buyer was. Shill bidding is also a massive issue, and when auction houses like Hakes keep the identity of their bidders confidential, it is easy for them to get away with it. When I started buying vintage toys in the pre-internet days, a person's ability to amass a quality collection was a reflection of their networking skills and their dedication to the hunt. Today, with everything available at the click of a mouse, the only gateway requirement to collecting Kenner Star Wars is wealth, and it's crazy to think that some people are willing to pay thousands of dollars for a single figure that used to cost three bucks, because they think it's rare. But they believe this because it's the hype train message that auction houses and grading companies are spreading like wildfire, and they're convincing people to buy into that positive feedback loop. Currently, original 12 back carded Star Wars figures sell for thousands of dollars, but these are not rare items, they're just popular. These figures were manufactured in the tens of millions, and on any given day you'll find at least half a dozen 12 back carded C-3PO's for sale on eBay, and another six that sold in the last few weeks. With that many available on the secondary market, you can't tell me they're rare while keeping a straight face. When you can click on eBay and buy the entire first wave of 12 back carded Star Wars figures in less than an hour, if you have the money, you're delusional if you're trying to convince yourself that they're worth the hefty price tag due to rarity. Bespin Luke is one of my favourite figures in the original line, because he looked cool. He was the main hero, and he came with a blaster and a lightsaber accessory. And back in 2011, I wanted to add this carded version to my collection, and I remember thinking, when I paid $200 for it, that it was quite a steep price. But today, this figure in this type of condition will set you back closer to $800. That's a 300% increase in value, so be warned. If you're one of the people that bought into this game as an investment, you're playing a risky angle because the market will eventually crash. And if you're one of those people who started collecting out of a genuine passion for the toys, then brace yourself for the certainty that sooner or later, the value of your collection will plummet. I have never collected vintage toys because they hold some kind of monetary value. I collect them because that is what I genuinely love doing. 
and I have often said that I wish they were practically worthless so that I could afford to buy many more of them. With that realisation I am fully prepared for the day that my collection is worthless and for when there will be no one else left who wants to buy the stuff anyway. And I'm perfectly fine with that because with each purchase I make I am buying the opportunity to enjoy these toys and I have no regrets. I'm not making this video to try and convince anyone to stop buying vintage Star Wars toys. That would make me a hypocrite as I've bought several figures in the last couple of months. What I am saying is that collectors really need to open their eyes and realise that now is not the time to be buying expensive items. When I first got into collecting I wanted all the things all at once, but I'm fortunate that I left that phase behind me around 20 years ago. I've been collecting for so long that I'm now afforded patience and I find it easy to walk away from unreasonable deals, but I do understand that feeling of needing that next toy. I've been there, I've done it, I get it. The boy has no patience. If you're one of the lucky few who has more money than sense and you want to buy every vintage Star Wars toy you come across, then more power to you. But for the average Joe on the toy hunt, I implore you to not be too hasty to secure that next toy. Throughout the entire history of commerce, all markets have peaks and troughs, and when you see an unusually high peak like we're currently seeing with vintage Star Wars toys, it is only a matter of time before the market completely collapses. And I don't want you to be the one left without a chair when the music stops. And I believe the DJ is going to stop that music sooner rather than later. Disney may have started this renewed interest in Star Wars with The Force Awakens, but their track record of late has turned more and more fans away from the franchise they once loved. Their new saga sequels turned out to be a complete dumpster fire, and every Disney Plus project aside from The Mandalorian Season 1 has been a total embarrassment. And with shows like Obi-Wan Kenobi not only being bad, but actually damaging the original trilogy movies in irreparable ways, the nostalgia bubble and the speculative collectible bubble are both ready to burst. Right now the vintage Star Wars toy market is propped up like a house of cards. So take a step back, pause for breath, and wait for the kerfuffle to be over. Patience. Thousands if not tens of thousands of Star Wars buyers will likely walk away from the hobby in the future, because it hasn't been an almost lifelong passion for them. It's been a money-making scam, and right now, the blue milk definitely isn't worth the squeeze. Mm -hmm.